I'm not the most horsey person in the world. In fact, they slightly unnerve me, but here I am. Here I am on some really lovely pasture <laughs> with, with, with these chaps. Now, I'm, no, 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 come on, come on. No, 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 no. No, don't, don't go near my hole. Come on, come on. Come on, that's mine. Uh, out, 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 out. Go away. No, I'm not, I don't want to get too close to the business end of that. I'm in some pasture. I feel I haven't been to before. It's got lovely contours and molehills all over it. I found some quite nice things already. I found one of those funny buckly type things with the, um, with the sort of stud in one side. I can't remember what those are, but I think that might be quite early. And then I found half a little spectacle bottle. And I found a lovely old, proper old pot leg of sorts. It's seriously windy. I'm unlikely to be doing that many live digs today. I've got this small camera going and that's going quite well at the moment, I hope. But um, I, I don't think my big camera will, will stand up. But those are one, so three really cool things. And actually, I've forgotten the first thing I found. I think it was a quite an early plum bob or, um, or plum weight of sorts. I think it's got a bit of ferrous on that side. Could that be Roman perhaps? It's a lovely one anyway, really gnarly. And I've got a brilliant, I've got a signal down here. Now I'm going to show you what it is. I've, I can see it. It's in the side there. I haven't, I haven't got it out yet. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just going to plug you in. I want to, I want to show you something about this machine. If this is working today, which it may not be. And if you can hear it above all the wind, the mic should be quite shielded at the moment. I want to show you something about the day. It's in the settings that I'm running it, which is not on full power effectively. Dug a few signals like this. Now listen. Sounds all right now, funnily enough. Quite faint because it's quite deep and it's tiny. But before I got that bit of clod out, it was just, it sounded like foil, but it was no iron in it, but there was just a buzz, it very, very buzzy. Do not ignore buzzy noises with this machine at your peril, because, now where is it? There. Look. It's a tiny little hammered coin. It's a little Edward Penny, I think. Can't think what else it would be. It's a bit clipped, but it's a beautiful color. And it sounded foily. Now they do often, because they're so thin. Look at them. I mean, they're tiny little things. Um, but, but, before I actually got it out, and it was quite on edge, it was just a hum. It was a mmm, mmm, mmm. And on another day, I may not have dug it. Anyway, absolutely thrilled with that. It's, it's a really good sign. hear this above the wind I'm afraid but I might try and show you what I mean I'll do my best what about this sound here just a faint buzz isn't it but it's sort of high pitched enough if you can hear it it's not iron definitely not but it's not very inspiring either Let's, let's, I'm going to change the reactivity for you and let's just see if that change, changes it. So let's bring it down a couple. 
to 1.5. I was running it on 2.5. And apparently you can go quite low with this machine. That wouldn't give you any more confidence. You'd ignore that. I'd probably ignore that if I heard it with that. Because it's sounding too foily and it is sounding a bit irony now, but when on my settings, for some reason, I've got to keep my ears open, but I don't mind that because I've got the earbuds. They can do it. I keep the audio response down too. It'd probably be iron after all this, but let's just have a look. You're not going to get any fancy camera angles today, I'm afraid. And it's going to be deep. It's sounding very foily now and boring. I just, you just, I don't think you can ignore them. <laughs> that sound like iron and foil now? Don't think so. Getting, I'm getting quite, getting to learn this machine in the light mode. Let's have a look. It's probably a bit of lead. No, it's a little, it's a little, um, well, it's a strap end of sorts and it's probably got a bit of age to it. Not much design or anything on it, I'm afraid. Um, but definitely a nice piece of copper that could have been something even more important than what it is. It's not very grand, but I'll take that at that depth. Don't ignore those buzzes with this. Just don't dig them. If you're in the mood, if they're all turning out to be foil and you're in a foily area, don't waste your time. Dig something else. But at the moment, those are coming up trumps. Crikey, this got me excited. Look, it, it came up, it was that side up. Look at all that gold. Wow. But it's just a button. I think it would have been, it's a dandy button of sorts, isn't it? Um, but it would have been very grand. I don't know if there's any design on it. Um, but I suspect, look at little bits there. Can I see anything on it? I'm not sure that'll even clean up. It's had a flower in the middle. I'm not so sure. But oh, I've got my heart racing. Look. Cool. Well, look at this. Now, it gave a pretty punchy sound, to be fair, but rather a staccato -y one, and it wasn't particularly clean. And I think it's a brooch of sorts. Um, yes, it is. And it's got its pin, and it's. My God. Well. Now, I'm not going to get too excited about this. I hope you can hear me. It's bloody windy. I've only got a small camera going. I can't... The, the other one won't stand up. But um, I have got the... I think the mic is fairly shielded. It's just here. So hopefully you'll hear me quite clearly. That's got to be too perfect to be, to be old. Can't believe that's old. I think that's made... That's a modern brooch for maybe a girl guide or sort of something to do with a pony club or something. And there's very horsey around here. They do sort of Jim Carners and, and sort of horsey, jumpy stuff. <laughs> that shows. That just shows you my equine knowledge and expertise. Horsey stuff. But that is just, I cannot believe that came out of the ground now like that, if it's old. Um, I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking fairly modern. I don't think that can be or not in that colour. I don't know if it's silver or alloy or whatever, but I cannot believe that that has survived, which is a shame because it's really amazing. Well, look, let's Wizard of Oz style, Wiz that's headquarters. <laughs> um, if, it, if it's good and if it's not good, I'll just, I'll just teleport myself straight back. Let's go. Well, I'm still not sure about this. Because it just looks, just looks so new. Um, there's a, is a tiny little bit um, on that side there where you can see where a join is. There's no hallmark or anything like that. Um, I, I, I suppose it's got to be silver. I put it on the detecting hub saying, this can't be old, can it? Um, and 
the usual suspects um, did say immediately silver, medieval, annular bridge. Um, and no one really um, seemed to think much more differently, apart from Reaver, who said, looks like the type of pin used to keep the quad bike trailer door shut. <laughs> it was a bit small. Um, it's a bit small, Reaver, but I know what you mean. <laughs> it's just... But anyway, let's just presume it is a medieval annular brooch. It's an absolutely incredible find. Um, it's just the most beautiful thing in the world. It just, now, I mean, I've said before, the soil in these fields does tend to keep certain artifacts and coins, as you've seen in the last few videos, in incredibly good condition. Uh, it, they just, it just doesn't get turned over. So it's never, it's never seeing any sort of machinery to knock it out of shape or scratch it. Um, it it's just it, it, extraordinary. So perhaps it really is. Um, I mean, it, it's just, it's simplicity and all the rest of it just makes me feel that, well, if someone came and told me that is a modern brooch, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm also not surprised that it is a really beautiful medieval one as well. Um, please let me know what you think. It's just, I, I don't really mind either way. It's just such a lovely object. <laughs> but in my heart of hearts, I can always think, I, I, I can always just tell myself, even if it is new, that it is old. But if you look up on the Portable Antiquity Scheme website, let me just bung it in. Medieval silver annular brooch. Here, here they are. Here's a few up here. And they do look very, very similar. And they were very, very similar size. It's just this one just looks so perfect. It's just a bit mm, something in the back of my mind niggles. But anyway, I'm completely thrilled with it and I'm really, really lucky. Um, so thank you very much for listening to that. Um, we, we come back here a couple more times. Um, so see you later. It's, it's not just everywhere, this field. I'm really having to work quite hard. There's a lot of musket balls, a lot of musket balls, it, to the extent that I think it must have been a range of sorts. Um, but anyway, let's keep going. I've never seen this and I've booked it. But it's an absolutely stunning button. button. Not that side, don't worry. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? When I first saw it, again, it was another one of those things glinting at me. I thought, oh my God, is that some funny Saxon brooch or something? Because I don't think so. I think it's a Victorian button. But jolly nice, pretty. Cartridge, eh? Every, well, every day of the week. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. You can probably hear now the interference of the electric fence. It's, it's because it's horses everywhere. There's electric fences everywhere. My God, they go a bit mad. It's a little Roman coin. I wasn't expecting this. These fields are, are amazing. They just keep surprising you with all sorts of bits and pieces, including this now, it's an absolute beauty. Um, the detail and the definition is, it looks like it's been professionally clean. Now, it's got an emperor with um, a military helmet on, on one side, probably Const Constantine. My God, it's windy. <sighs> Gonna be blown away in a minute. It's got the globe and the, um, and the and the globe on the altar. I mean, it looks like it's been professionally cleaned. It's got a cons, no, no surprise there. Mid fourth century bronze, Constantine, Constantine the second, Constantius, Constans, could be any of them. There was even a daughter called, called, called Constantia, but I don't think there are coins found by her. If they are, they're rare as hen's teeth. And on the other is the globe. And it's got, I can see the mint mark and all the stuff. It's, it's Beata Tranquillitas or whatever it is that, um, on that side. That's just, that's made my day so far. I mean, that's just beautiful. And what a sound. My God. Well, hi there and welcome to headquarters. Well, even at the time, I wasn't really planning on doing a headquarters segment on this coin. It was only when I got it back. I realised just quite how wonderful it was. And the main reason is that it didn't even really, it didn't really even need cleaning. I've just literally wiped the mud off it and it could have been made yesterday. I mean, it is, it is as if it was dropped. 
2,000 years ago, well, not 2,000 years ago, more like 1,700 years ago, almost exactly, um, from when it was minted in about 320, and it hasn't come to any sort of harm in between. It's absolutely extraordinary. Now, the reason I get so excited about it, I mean, I'm really lucky. I've found loads of Roman coins, but the majority of them, let's say 80% of them, are like this. These are just a few that I've just got lying around on my desk. I mean, we call them, I mean, they're, they're commonly known as grots for sort of fairly obvious reasons. Um, you can hardly make out anything on them at all of those ones. Um, and I said in the title, my best Roman coin. Now, I've found bigger coins. I've found more valuable coins. I've found silver coins. I'm yet to find a gold one. Um, my God, I mean, that is just the top of my to-do list. I mean, I, half of me thinks that if I do ever find one, I might just stop because it's never going to get any better. But th this might well be the best coin I've ever found, certainly in this sort of condition. And the history of, of it's really good too. Now, it's Constantine the Great. I know that because it says so clearly. I mean, I didn't, even, I didn't need a glass to read it. Constantinus Org. Now, if it was Constantinus Knob or Constantinus IPL or there's several other Constantinuses, it's more likely to be minted under Constantine but looking at one of his sons, Constantine II, when you've got this reverse, which we'll go on to in a minute. But because it just says Constantinus Org, I know that's Constantine the Great. Now the back, which is in equally good condition, I mean, is absolutely astonishing coin, is the altar and the globe and the two stars above it, or is it three stars? Three stars above it. And it is Beata Tranquillitas which means blessed peace, blessed tranquility, worse the effect of. And underneath that, it says incredibly clearly PTR, which is the tree air mint. On top of that, he's wearing a helmet. Now, there are several of these coins. Um, th this is a brilliant website. I'll leave a link to it. It's really, really good for IDing coins because you can put bits of the legend in of the obverse and the reverse, and it comes up with with, with, with what it might be. Now, I mean, it is just astonishing how many different coins there are per emperor. Even an emperor who only was around for a year or two might have minted 200, 300 different types of coin. I mean, it's just extraordinary. Now, there were quite a few of these coins with him just with a laurel wreath. But this one isn't. As I said at the time, he's got, a, he's got his military helmet on. And I came across another brilliant website, which I'll put a link into as well, which is Judaism and Rome, Rethinking Judaism's Encounter with the Roman Empire. It's basically got this hot coin, but with Constantine wearing the wreath. That dates it to about 320, but I think this one is a couple of years later, 323. I'm not going to go through the whole lot, but it is a really, really good bit of text. And it explains all about this coin and what the symbolism of it all means. And it says here, Constantine minted in 322 and 323 three similar bronzes with the same reverse imagery but him depicting a military helmet rather than a laurel wreath <laughs> it went ours again um see last video uh these issues arguably emphasize more specifically the role of military power in his bringing about of tranquility now there's all sorts of reasons why you've got vot double x and stuff on the altar and it's to do with 10 20 years of of peace since constantine became emperor um, and bits and pieces like that. All of it is explained brilliantly in this one article, so I'll leave that to you. I'm having a, a couple of drawers made at the moment to, um, so I can display these types of coin more easily. And that really is going to take pride of place, and I can't say any more about it. It's just a Roman coin, 1,700 years old, in mint condition. I mean, looking like it was dropped the day it was made, and I'm completely gobsmacked and just over the moon about it. Just the most incredible coin. Anyway, thanks for listening to all that. And let's go back to the fields. Well, my God, it just gets better and better. Look at the size of that buckle plate. So the, the pin would have come out there. Um, I don't know how early this is, but I'm just feeling, is there some sort of design on that side? Um, it made a hell of a sound, as you can imagine. Um, I don't know, we'll get that back to headquarters. I'll clean that up, because that could be all sorts of things going on on that.
I mean, it could be all just, it could be the most incredible. Is it a dog there with the ears coming up like that? Or a lion with a tail coming out? Gosh, look at that. Fabulous. That's too punchy, really. But let's have a go. I mean, more than a bit of heavy copper or something like that, I think, or a rifle round, perhaps. Oh. God, it's a fun field already. I'm not doing it very scientifically. I want to see what it's like. That's going to be a big bit of iron or a big bit of lead. It's just too horrible. Still giving a huge sound. Yeah, I'll be surprised if this is any good. <laughs> Here it is. God, I don't know what that is. Is it a horse brass? I think it is. It's a. I think it's a. It's a. It's a cheek piece, isn't it? For um, for a horse, I think. But anyhow, big bit of copper big bit of co copper plate <laughs> that's what makes that sound famous last words my speakers working quite well today temperamental that's a nice sound to be fair It's a bit cartridgey, if I'm going to be completely honest, and there's a lot of cartridges in this field, and there's a lot of lead. There's lead everywhere, all around here. You just have to dig it. But I think it's still in there. This is on the corner there. Yeah, I've just, it just sort of felt like it had a bit of depth, that. It's a good seven or eight inches, I would have thought. Yeah, a bit cartridgey, if I'm being completely honest. Oh, it's a musket ball. Plenty of those here. No, what now? My God, that's rather wonderful, I think. Wow, now it's a buckle with its buckle plate, I think. And the buckle plate's got rather a good design on it. I've got to be a bit careful with this. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Now these buckles, they look much, much, um, much later than what, than what they are. Um, but I've never seen one with the, with the design on the buckle plate like that. Um, that's a bit special. I don't think it's got its pin. Um, well, you can see the ferrous remains of where it would have been. I think, we'll, I think we will um, we'll be a bit careful with that. Because I don't want to rub any of the design off it. I've never seen, I've never seen a buckle plate like that. Um, gosh. That's, that, that's rather special, lad. Let's go back to headquarters and have a quick look at it. Look at it properly. Okay, go. Well, I put this on the detectinghub.co.uk information below. Um, I was very excited about it on the field. I'm, I was sort of less excited about it when I got back because it just doesn't, it, I'm just not sure how, how old it is it is a basically it's definitely a new one on me i've never found anything quite like this um taskies <laughs> sit sit taskies and um in head cameraman pose 
keeping an eye on what's happening in the garden. That's his little seat. He loves it up there. Anyway, sorry, Basky, you distracted me. I, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. That doesn't make it rare, doesn't make it necessarily common. I just don't know even how old it is. It's just a bit of a tricky one. Um, and bar, I think Dave on the detecting hub was reckoning that it did slightly remind him of what's called King's Head um, buckles, which are medieval buckles. And they are fairly one piece like this with a sort of King's Head coming where that would be. I might show you a photograph of it now. But we didn't have any luck. No one got back to me at all on it. So it's probably not very exciting. But this... <laughs> This is quite exciting and it is, um, uh, I tried cleaning it up, I've done with, 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 with some of the inserts of the composite cleaning pencil, the black one and the um, brass one and, and, and toothpicks and stuff. It's a medieval buckle plate and it's a stonking one. You would have had the, the, the sort of the, the rod going through there, you would have had a pin coming out like that and you'd have had the buckle going through it like that. Um, being held by the, being clasped by that section coming round there and then you would have had the pin coming through the hole there and it would have been the most incredible um, plate. Now on the portable antiquity scheme I just bunged up um, buckle plate griffin because I think that's what it is and, and, and quite a few came up. It's not a particularly unusual depiction, depiction of a griffin and actually in the right kind of light, you can see quite clearly where his, where, where that, well, there's a definite beak and a head, sort of bird eagle type beak and head there. I can see where the wings might have been and there's a leg there and a hind leg there. Um, I don't think it's going to clean up any better than how, what, what I've done at the moment, sadly. But it's still a, just a lovely thing and would have been a, a really, really cool. Um, I quite often say in these videos um, that the ones on the Portable Antiquities Scheme website aren't as good as mine. Well, in this case, there's several on the Portable Antiquity Scheme website, which are definitely better than mine. Um, so if you look up um, on that website, um, Buckle Plate Griffin, you'll see a load coming up. I'll show you some here. Um, and some of them are really quite nice, that one especially. Which is very, very sort of similar. Anyway, thank you very much um, for that. And let's go back to the fields. Well, that's rather wonderful. I'm pleased with this. Um, it is a... It's an Edward Penny. It's an Edward Penny of sorts. It's a hammered coin. And it's bloody lovely. Um, that's just something else, that. Um, it's a bit clipped. But I can clearly see the monarch on that side. And I can clearly see Civitas on that side. And the mint can't quite make out it is a bit worn but that's brilliant that's really really encouraging it's really lovely to find things like this early on wow yeah i'm really happy with that yeah it's brilliant but what a lovely coin this is it gave a sound like it looks and that is a very worn george the third Halfpenny, I think. Um, can't think what else it is. Britannia's facing that way, so it's pre George the Fourth. I think he was the first to have Britannia facing that way. Um, or William the Fourth, one of the two. Um, and that's lovely. Nice box. I think they're 1807. These ones, aren't they? 1806, 1807. Well, I'm not organising this on demand to have to have horses in the background of every shot. Hope you can hear me. What a day this is turning out to be. I mean, I've just filled my hole in here. Not particularly well. Do that a bit of a better job on that, I think. Let's just get all that back in. These holes are fine this time of the year. As long as you seal them up properly, don't worry. I don't worry too much about the you know, bits of dirt on top. As long as the holes seal properly, this time of year, they, you know, they fix themselves pretty quickly, pretty easily. Look at this. It's an absolutely wonderful little tiny thimble. Um, hi. <laughs> Hello, you two. Do you want to see my thimble? Are you going to bite me? <laughs> Hello. This one's all right, I think. This one's a bit flighty. But generally speaking, I mean, I'm not the most natural with horses, but I'm... Um, 
I feel that um, these ones are these ones are pretty easy. Anyway, I'm thrilled with that. That's a tiny little medieval thimble, I think. Oh, what a day. These guys are bringing me luck. Well, look, I think that's another hammered coin. It's my third one. Yeah, look. It's a tiny... Well, it's a short course. But I think. But the clip within an inch of its life. Look at that. I mean, that really has seen... God, you'd get hung, drawn, quartered twice for that. Because um, it was obviously illegal to clip coins. My God. I don't think that's damaged. I think that's heavily clipped. Tiny little short cross. So it'll be Henry the Second to Henry the Third. With John or Richard in the middle. One of them lot. Amazing. But my God. Well, what a bloody fabulous day. The wind's died down a bit, thank God. And I've been out long enough now, so I'm going to call it a day. The days are getting a bit longer, though. It's only to two o'clock-ish, and I can just feel it's nicer. Um, I can't do more than about four hours these days. I used to be able to detect all day, quite happily, from dawn till dusk. Now, four hours, four hours does me, and keeps me wanting to come back for more. I don't like overdoing it anymore. Now that could well just be a musket ball. I found so many of those here, but it's the perfect sound with this machine now. That's what I like. That's what I like to see, to hear. I've got some new leads arriving for this speaker soon. I'm hoping that's going to make a bit of a difference. And it's still in there. I'm not surprised by the depth of this machine anymore. It's certainly It's out. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a brilliant, brilliant thing to end on. It's another little hammered coin. That is the fourth one today. They think, I think my record's about four. Um, well, that's brilliant. God, and it's another fairly clipped Edward Penny by the look of it. Um, but I don't mind, that's four pieces of silver today. Wow. And on that note, the wind is getting up. Got the horses behind me. And I've had a bloody brilliant day. And four hammered coins, well you don't get much better than that. Well, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.